Hi, my name is Greg Davis. I'm a rhinologist, director of rhinology at the University of Washington Medical Center, and I'm also an otolaryngologist or an ear, nose, and throat specialist. And I'm here with Zara Patel, my friend from Stanford University, who is a rhinologist. Up here is one of my guest lecturers at the Seattle Otology and Advanced Rhinology course. So Zara, first of all, thank you for taking time out of your busy day. Of course, Greg. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an amazing course. I think this entire facility is state of the art and it's been a great time. Excellent. Thank you. So tell me, what is a rhinologist? And you know, it sounds like rhinoceros, but really, what do you do <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis? That's right. So rhinologist is someone who does everything regarding the nose and the sinuses and the skull base. So, you know, the diseases, the disease processes, the tumors, the infections, the inflammatory stuff that goes on within the nasal cavity, the sinus cavity, and at the skull base is what we focus on in our practices. Excellent. Is there something about your practice? What do you really love doing? Like when a patient comes in and has this problem, right. what's, what really excites you about that? You know, I there's so many different things I love about rhinology, but I really like the balance that we have in the field that we could see patients with really terrible inflammatory sinus disease whose quality of life is really almost taken over by that disease process and by treating them correctly, whether it's medically or surgically, you can really turn their whole life around, allow them to breathe again, and they're just very grateful, happy, and otherwise healthy patients. And on the other hand, we also have these sinus tumors like cytonasal malignancies that are at the skull base. And these are patients that maybe just 10 years ago, they would have been told that there's no way to access that tumor appropriately. They would have probably been sent to hospice and given about six months to live. And now, because we have the training and the tools and the technology to access those tumors, we're able to get to that area, clear out the malignancy. Maybe the patient stays in the hospital for a few days, and then they get to go on with their lives. And that is really gratifying, too. So I, I would say those are the, the general things I love about rhinology. Zara, you also do research as part of your career path. And one common interest that we both have is olfaction or the right. sense of smell. What is it about olfactory loss that really is an interest to you? Why is olfaction important? I mean, we have our hearing and we have our sight and sense of touch and taste, but what about smell? Why yeah. is that so important to patients? So I would say that there's two parts of that question. One, why is, am I so interested in it? And other is, why is it so important to patients? So um, for patients, you know, we don't realize, it's one of those things that until it's gone, you don't appreciate how much you use it or how much you need it. And you know, if you think about the way that our society is set up, across all cultures, actually, the way society is set up, we interact with our families and our friends and strangers almost always over some food or drink. And so the appreciation of that food and drink is very integral to our bonding with other people and our social interactions with other people. And it's part of what makes us human. There's also been really interesting work in how it associates maternal bonding with children, how um, people are attracted to each other via the mediated sense of smell. So there's so many levels in which olfaction affects us that we probably don't appreciate until it's gone. Patients will say, you know, that they can become socially isolated, depressed, things like that. So I think that smell is really important overall, and that's why it's important to patients. Why it started to interest me in my practice is because, you know, when you go into this subspecialty, I've sort of touched on this already, but, you know, you are a sub-subspecialist. You are just concentrated on this very one specific part of the anatomy, and almost all patients that come to a tertiary care academic rhinologist, we see sort of the worst of the worst, you want to be the patient, want to be the person that has that final answer for that patient. You want to be the one to fix them. You want to be the one to cure them. And almost always we are in that particular patient population. Except I started seeing more and more patients in my practice with this problem of olfaction. And it was the one thing that I had nothing to offer. And it really started to frustrate me that this really important sense that we all take for granted but has such a huge impact in our patients' lives, we really didn't have anything good to offer them. And that's really what drove my interest in starting researching that patient population. That's very understandable. 
Thank you for taking time out of your busy week to come uh, and help teach people at our course. I really appreciate that. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm.